Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Navy Dad and this is Rusted Bolts Garage. Okay, so as you saw earlier, I uh, had put the Miata on hold for a little while to get some things fixed with uh, Old Blue, our 94 Chevy pickup. So, ended up getting a little bit longer than I thought, so I broke it up into three parts. Part one was getting to know Old Blue. Oh, come on, it was fun. This part is where we get serious. This part, I'm going to give a complete how-to, how to upgrade your radiator if you have a 4.3 liter, and this is in particular to the GMT 400 series truck was built from 1988 to 1998 and 99 for the one ton trucks. And um, this, uh, this particular item that we're doing today is upgrading the radiator from your 4.3 liter V8, a V6 to a V8 radiator and converting the mechanical fan into an electrical fan and building the entire electrical system to drive that. So I have a complete how-to. Uh, on this, uh, or this, this will be a complete how-to, and you'll have complete details down below. Uh, where what you need to get from the junkyard, complete list, what you need to buy, uh, where to buy it, part numbers, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then I'll have out on Google Docs a complete schematic of how to do the electrical system. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, let's get started now. Uh, first of all, below in the link, that is the link to Google Docs. Where you're going to find your shopping list. You're going to find links to all of the different parts. Keep in mind, Amazon will change some of their parts from time to time, so you may have to look the part up, <laughs> which you do in the little search feature. Uh, and also a complete schematic on how to do this. And again, you can do this on any vehicle. It's not just specifically for our venerable OBS GMT 400 Series 1 C1500 pickup truck. But uh, I have made some changes, uh, so I'm going to make this even a little easier, I think. I hope, anyway. So, first of all, I decided uh, not to use this mess. Um, although this is, is very powerful, it will handle a lot of power, it will, uh, uh, you know, it's just a good relay system which you can use for other stuff. But I just don't have the time to make a bracket for it because the bracket that this attaches to on the Volvo 740 is part of the radiator fan shroud and it's just pain in the ass so I'm just gonna make my own and uh, which actually is just as cost-effective as buying this because I think I paid twelve dollars for this at pick and pull oh and again uh, I'll have prices down in here because you should be able to do this whole thing for less than two hundred bucks um, and again any car so we're gonna say goodbye to that now uh, next thing is how we set up the fan switch and again I'll have all this information in here but the first thing you're gonna do if you do have a GMT uh, 400 truck um, is you're gonna need to go to AutoZone or um, or was it Ad advanced auto Riley's yes uh, or even like uh, well you can probably find it on Amazon or um, actually uh, Summit Racing which is where I actually got this one but you will see that this is the uh, thermostat housing and you see the this right here that is a an MPT uh, three eighths I think anyway well it fits this so that's what you need because that's where you're gonna put your BMW fan switch I believe most of BMWs throughout the 90s and the early 2000s use the same setup so this is the fan switch itself and there's two different temperatures there's high temperature and a low temperature really you want the higher temperature which is I can't read it Oh boy, uh, 91 degrees Celsius and 99 degrees Celsius, which uh, well, I can't remember. I'll put that in the link. It's it's somewhere around 195 or 210 or something like that. So that's the one you want. You don't want the other one, which is like 80 something Celsius. That's a little bit too low. The fans will be on all the time. You don't want that. So this is the fan switch. There's three terminals. C, okay. The, uh, the top terminal is kind of stands by itself. That's actual ground wire. And then each of the other two terminals are actually listed. And it's very hard to see, but you can see a T1 and a T2. One being the lower speed, two being the higher speed. Then you have your plug, okay? 
and you'll, you'll need to look at it. each one of these damn plugs I've ever pulled out of here the wires are all different colors it's just kind of nuts but uh, and this one's kind of worn out I may actually replace it but uh, uh, it's cracked and everything but most important thing is you're gonna need especially if you have an American car is you need the uh, connector and these used to be really hard to find but now if you go out to Amazon and you search for this switch and you pull it up look down at the bottom you're gonna get a one-click shop for this for the the wiring harness for the switch and for the fitting this is a 3 8 by 14 by 1.5 I think is the thread and and that's the metric of course going here and then the uh, SAE going right there now uh, so there you have it next uh, well again I'm gonna have full schematic for for all of this and uh, next we're gonna compare radiators and I'll show you the difference between what the little 4.3 liter V6 has and what the V8 trucks have and Actually, there's two different radiators for the V8 trucks at this particular time, uh, and you want to get the big one. I mean, if you're going to do this, you might as well get the big one, right? Get the one out of the uh, three-quarter ton Suburban or any, actually, any four-wheel drive uh, full-size uh, V8-powered truck had the, had the same radiator. Okay, here is a comparison of the radiator. Obviously, this front radiator is for the 4.3 liter V6, and you can see pretty small core and this is your full-size GM truck radiator this came out of a 97 three-quarter ton Suburban and you can see just how much larger the radiator is not only the core itself but it's physically longer and it has Obviously, well, it has transmission cooler, which they all do, but this one also has uh, oil cooler if you, if you want to do the optional uh, oil, uh, engine oil cooler, uh, which I'm not going to do until I do my engine swap later. But here's the cool thing, is that this is a direct drop-in. Um, let me move over to the truck. So, uh, the bottom piece where the radiator goes, Okay, so, and like a dumbass, I already threw away the uh, lower radiator motor mount, or uh, mount. But that is where the uh, 4.3 liter uh, rubber mount goes. And then here is where the V8 mount goes here. And then over here you have the same thing, V6 and V8. Now hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the V6 upper shroud and you can see that this is the mounting point here and here these are the little rubber things that actually hold the top of the radiator unfortunately on the V8 you don't have that so here is the V8 shroud and I went ahead and picked up everything that I thought I might need uh, at the junkyard for this but that is not hold the radiator in place it sits on top of the radiator and bolts to the radiator core support what holds the upper radiator in place is these mounts and I'll show you in a second how they actually go on so and then here are lower mounts so let me go back to the truck okay so your lower mounting rubber doohickeys go there for your larger radiator and here and then I'll, I'll show, well, I didn't go in. Damn it, get in. I got turned around. Get in there, okay. And, and I'll show you uh, installing the, later, or the radiator itself later. But, uh, and I'll also give you a full list of the junkyard parts that you're going to want to make sure you get when you do this conversion. Okay, and here are the upper mounts. And where they bolt in. Uh... And that's the backwards. Whoops. Hold on. Okay. The existing mounting holes are already there. So you don't have to worry about uh, drilling any holes or anything it, that's there from the factory. So they built this thing to house whatever motor they decided to put in it. So uh, that will mount your upper radiator. So you don't need 
a shroud at all uh, to do this um, to do this conversion. Um, and, and, and I'll show you why on, on my fan choice, which has changed. Okay, this was the fan I was going to use, and actually would have fit fine. Problem is, uh, it's shot. I probably should have taken a drill battery with me and tested it when I was at the junkyard, but it sounds like it's full of dirt. It is so noisy, and it's just done. So it will go into the trash can. Now you can use this or you can use the Taurus fan. It's actually the fan blade itself and the center fan is actually the same. It's just a different uh, a shroud. And I believe I was wrong. I think I said 4,800 RPM on the high end. Now it's like 45. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but uh, anyway, decided not to do this. So let me find you or show you what I did decide to use. Okay, so there's the fan we're going to use. And that actually is brand new. Um, I started digging around, hunting around, see what the heck am I going to actually use. And eventually when I do my engine swap in here, these might not be big enough. I may have to go to a larger fan. I may have to actually use a uh, GMT 900 series uh, electric fans, which is, you know, the 07 and later. So anyway, started looking around, trying to figure out what fan. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on all this. In fact, I'll, I will tell you at the end how much this, this all cost. This is actually a brand new Dorman replacement unit. And I'll give you the part number here. I actually found this on my, um, <laughs> believe it or not, Facebook Marketplace, just around the corner, not too far from me. And it's brand new and I got it for 80 bucks. Oh yeah, and one other note. Until you're completely finished with this and satisfied, don't throw away any of your old parts because end up not being satisfied with it or have to go back to uh, factory stock for any reason then you're gonna have to make another trip to the junkyard and that's just gonna piss you off so keep the stuff for a while okay yes I shaped it off wife said I was looking old yeah anyway in an effort to keep these things from uh, uh, this particular one from getting way too long because I can get kind of winded um, I've broken this up into two parts otherwise it was gonna be way too long so this is the end. We'll call this uh, Old Blues Renovations Part 2.1. And in Part 2.2, .2, you'll see how to install it and do the wiring and set everything up and test it. And then, of course, there'll be lessons learned because there are always lessons learned when you're doing something that ain't stock. So, boys, be safe. I'll see you in a minute because Part 2.2 .2 is uploaded at the same time this one was, so, alright, maybe that out. Okay, in an effort to keep these way too long, uh, no. Okay, in an effort to keep these short and not, no.